Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we are still in Chapter 3, and today we're going to talk about the metric system and the SI units. So first of all, what is the SI system? It is the System International, and these are the units that uh, scientists, actually anyone making measurements all over the world, use, and it is a revised metric system and the metric system is based on a unit of 10. So let's go back a little bit and talk about the metric system versus the so-called American system. So Americans use only feet, inches, and yards, um, and that system dates back to um, colonial times and to when everything was based on the king. So every time there was a new king, you had new units. So for instance, the yard measurement was the length of the king's arm. The foot was the size of the king's foot. And a pound was how many marbles the king could pick up with one fist. So again, every time the king changed, the units changed. So due to trade between countries, they eventually came up with a system, the metric system, which is all based on powers of 10. And everybody agreed what the measurements would be based off of. So what the yard measurement had to mean, what the foot, etc. So in the metric system, there are seven base units, and everything else is derived from the seven base units. So let's look at the seven base units. They are length, and the base unit for uh, length is the meter, symbolized with a lowercase m. For mass, it's the kilogram, kg, although we'll be talking about the gram mostly this year. For temperature, it is the Kelvin, capital K. Uh, the base unit for time is the second, and again, there's an atomic clock that we use currently for the measurement of the second, but um, actually we're moving to new methods of uh, measuring and having a standard, but we'll talk about that later. The uh, base unit for quantity is the mole, um, and for luminosity, it is the candela. Um, we're probably not going to spend much time talking about the candela. And for current, it's the ampere. So with metric prefixes, everything is a power of 10. So we consider the base unit, which would be 10 to the 0. And again, that's our base units that we talked about on the previous slide. And then we go through uh, large and small units. So we use these metric prefixes and we start, uh, we'll start with talking about mega, which is a million of the base unit or 10 to the 6, kilo, which is a thousand of the base unit, so 10 to the 3, hecto is a hundred base units, 10 to the 2, deca is 10 times the base unit, 10 to the 1, and then we get to prefixes for less than the base unit, so deci is a tenth of the base unit, centi is a hundredth, milli is a thousandth, and micro is a millionth. And notice uh, there's a jump of a thousand between micro and milli, and a jump of a thousand between kilo and mega. So how do we keep these straight? A good way to do that is to come up with some sort of a mnemonic device, and most of us in the chemistry department use this particular mnemonic device, which um, a student came up with several years ago, like maybe 15 years ago. And the saying is, most kittens hate dogs because dogs can't meow much. So mega, kilo, hecto, deca, base, deci, centi, milli, micro. So we'll sp spend more time talking about um, these metric prefixes as we start doing worksheets. But for now, I'd like to start talking about derived units. So derived units um, are those that are derived from one of the seven base units. If we talk about volume, it's derived from length. So we think of volume in terms of a cubic meter or a cubic centimeter or a cubic foot. So again, it is based on length. Um, a more convenient unit in everyday life that you'll encounter is a liter. And again, it makes it easier to talk about than talking about cubic meters. 
some other derived units that you might have encountered, density, which is a ratio of an object's mass to its volume. So density you learned at the, uni uh, at the junior high is uh, mass per unit volume, and so its unit would be grams per centimeter cubed. So again, it's a complex unit. It's based upon mass and volume, and volume is based upon uh, length. So density in general decreases as temperature increases with some examples. Um, another unit that we talk about is specific gravity, one more derived unit. And specific gravity is any time you're comparing the density of a substance to the density of water. So let's look at that. So for the specific gravity of a substance, we would take the density of that substance which is in grams per cubic centimeters, and compare that to the density of water. Again, grams per cubic centimeter. So you'll notice that those two units would cancel out, and so specific gravity is something that has no units. When might you use specific gravity? So let's say you were trying to figure out if a particular object would float or sink in water. If its density is greater than that of water, it would have a specific gravity greater than 1. If its density was less than water, it would have a specific gravity less than 1, and that would be a way for you to determine whether something would sink, density greater than water, or whether it would float, density less than water. Another measurement that we'll talk about a lot this year is temperature. When you're measuring temperature, you're actually measuring the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. Scientists use two temperature scales generally, the Celsius scale and the Kelvin scale. You might have learned about the Fahrenheit scale, but scientists don't use that. So it's useful to know that the Celsius scale is based on the freezing point and boiling point of water, and the Kelvin scale is based on something called absolute zero, which is the lowest possible temperature in the universe, and that corresponds to the temperature at which no movement would take place. And by movement, I mean even atoms and um, electrons, etc. So the Celsius scale um, is based upon the freezing point of water being set at zero and the boiling point of water set at 100 degrees C. And again, there's 100 uh, degrees between the two, so sometimes you'll hear it called the centigrade scale. So converting between degrees C and degrees Fahrenheit, you might have learned this at the junior high, to calculate degrees Fahrenheit from C. Degrees Fahrenheit is 9 fifth degrees C plus 32 and to convert to degrees C from Fahrenheit, it would be degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, and then you take 5 ninths of that. The Kelvin scale, the freezing point of water is 273 Kelvin, and the boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin. So 0 Kelvin is, I've uh, mentioned, considered absolute 0. You'll notice that when you're writing um, Kelvin temperature, there is no degree sign used, and that is the international convention. So with C and F, you put a degree sign. With Kelvin, you do not. So let's look at how you go back and forth between Kelvin and C. Kelvin is equal to the degree C plus 273, and to get degree C from Kelvin, you would just subtract 273. So for now, I'm going to say we will be doing a bunch of worksheets using all of this information, but for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.